What's the perfect way to end the weekend? Sunday brunch at Salt Creek Grill, of course. Wind down with delectable dishes off Salt Creek's award-winning menu and enjoy a glass of champagne, because after all, you deserve it. Make Sunday brunch at Salt Creek Grill a new tradition with your family and friends. Salt Creek Grill in Valencia on Town Center Drive in front of the movie theater. For reservations, 222-9999 or go online to saltcreekgrill.com. Hey there, I'm Tori with your hometown station weather. Another sunny and very warm day with a high of 98 degrees. Clear tonight with a low of 71, then sunny tomorrow with a high of 100. Same for Saturday. For all that's going on in the Santa Clarita Valley, check us out on social media. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Or download the free app. Or just go to hometownstation.com. Love that song. The Ask Brian theme. It used to be the Rocky theme, but we're, 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 t- we're making it the Ask Brian theme from now on. Get you pumped up. I want to get pumped up. Okay, you're listening to KHCS 1220 and 98.1 FM. And uh, we have a, an extremely uh, highly qualified guest, as usual. Uh, for people that don't know or have never listened to the Ask Brian radio show, Ask Brian is uh, part of the Ask Brian network. Ask Brian has its website, and on the Ask Brian website, people get to learn and solve business problems. And the business problems can be solved by a community, uh, fellow business owners that have experienced the same business problem may answer the question. You may have an expert uh, person in dry cleaning who owns three dry cleanings in Atlanta, Georgia, and as somebody that has a dry cleaning store in Los Angeles and somebody left their fur coat, and they they may not know what to do. They started out in business. So another business owner can help and answer that question. Hey, I've dealt with that problem before. This is how it works in Atlanta. I'm not sure if it works the same way, but I'm just letting you know. So that's one way Ask Brian and the Ask Brian website can help. And by the way, Ask Brian is A-S-K-B-R-I-E-N. Emphasis on the E. Uh, there's no A-N. It's not Y-A-N. It's B-R-I-E-N. Um, another aspect of the S. Brian website it allows experts to answer your question. So you can have, uh, in order to become an expert, you have to go through a qualifi- qualification stage. Not everyone that wants to become an expert can become an expert, but if you have generally 10,000 hours or you have some other reason why you have a background and experience that you can qualify yourself as an expert, you may be allowed to become an expert on the Ask Brian site. And as experts can also answer questions. Uh, and experts are allowed to post their videos, post their blog posts, post their ebooks, and actually schedule webinars so that uh, somebody who's a subscriber to the Ask Brian Network can go online to Ask Brian, find a webinar they want on Bitcoin or Facebook advertising or uh, Pinterest uh, marketing or whatever it is, find the and then schedule it on their own Google Calendar or iCalendar or whatever calendaring system they're using. And the best part is it's 100% free. There's no charge for anybody at this point in time. Down the road, we'll see what happens. But for right now, our goal is to make sure that everybody can solve their business problems. And the person we have that's going to be on our show today can solve a lot of your business problems, especially if they're related to Facebook and Instagram advertising and marketing and any other area along that lines. And her name is Sarah Liz, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Sarah, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. It's actually Sarah Yamkish. I just am called Sarah Liz on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, <laughs> you, you, know, you would have not have pronounced that right probably the first time. <laughs> uh, I don't think I would have pronounced it on the fourth time, but that's okay. Every, everyone's got their own issues, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Sarah, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, uh, right now, your company handles, you said, Facebook and Instagram marketing. Does it handle anything else? Well, handle? we will help. Yeah, we'll help folks build out what I call their their sales funnel. So, if people um, need, like, you know, whenever you see a Facebook ad, it's going to a landing page or a sales page, and if people need help building that out, we can help with that. 
and um, do you use a specific type of software for that? Um, we do use ClickFunnels a lot, um, but we're also open to using like lead pages and WordPress and, and other types of um, web development software. But ClickFunnels is sort of the, the easiest one for us. And one of the most popular, other than lead pages, from my not understanding. Yeah. So before yeah. you became involved with Facebook and Instagram, before they even existed, uh, uh, what was your background? What did you, uh, what did you do previously? It was like such a circuitous path for me to get here, <laughs> um, and it's now it's like it all makes up total sense. But um, um, I have undergrad degrees in anthropology and women's studies, and then I got a master's degree in social work, and I worked in a women's shelter for um, victims of domestic violence, and I worked with um, perpetrators of domestic violence for a while. Then I moved into the to the policy arena, and I worked in D.C. Um, in a congresswoman um, at, in the office of Congresswoman Lucille Roybal Allard of L.A. Actually, um, and then after doing that for about a year, I got a gig at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, working um, in the Division of Violence Prevention, which was at the time a dream job for me. Um, so, um, but I, after about five years, I realized that, no, well, it didn't take five years, but I came to terms with the fact that I was not a bureaucrat and would never be a bureaucrat and could not handle um, beige cubicles and red tape and bosses. <laughs> well, that's, that's very unusual. I don't know too many marketers that started out with that career path. Gee, I'm I know, a ma- right? I'll major in anthropology and women's studies, yeah, and someday I'll be doing... Uh, 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 Facebook advertising, and and after the company Instagram was created, I'll start marketing for them, because the company wasn't even created <laughs> when you were taking undergraduate classes. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no. I, I, I. It, it kind of makes sense in retrospect. So after social work, after being in social work policy, I wanted to work with people again. So I was like, well, instead of going back to get a clinical license and starting from square one, I'll just I'll go into life coaching because that's a it's easier, less red tape, right? Um, but if you're going to become a life coach, you've got to learn digital marketing in this day and age. You've got to have a website. And you've got to do, you know, your own marketing and have a list and all these things. And so I started getting into that, and that's that's how I found this passion. <laughs> well, you know what? Finding your passion in life, that's one of the most important things you can do. Uh, and it doesn't hurt if it makes a little money along the way. Uh, not that we're all yeah. money. <laughs> You know, sometimes... No, there's all kinds of abundance, all kinds. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, you didn't have a background in marketing. Uh, You had to learn on the fly. You had to learn on your own. So, what did you do? You just took classes? Yeah, so I took... It's interesting. I took a lot of online courses about about marketing and digital marketing. Um, And now I promote those, a lot of those kinds of courses. So um, I'm like the ideal client of a lot of my clients in a lot of ways. So um, yes, I, I, I did a lot of self-study and um, a lot of experience working on my own and my, and my friends and my early clients and more and more. I've invested tens of thousands of dollars in, in online courses. And so um, what was the first client you ever had? Oh, gosh. Good question. I mean, it depends on how we define client because I had, like, friend clients that, you know, bought me dinner. <laughs> and then, um, well, you know, and then I, some dinners are very expensive, so it could be, could be very high, expensive, you know. You know, my first, my first person that, I, that paid me, you know, officially to do Facebook ads for her was um, Kelly Azevedo who lives in California, and she had She's Got Systems.com, and she helped entrepreneurs get their online business systems in order. And so she, she was the first person that I worked with that I started taking courses so that I could help her implement her Facebook ads. So she was your guinea pig? She was one of my first guinea pigs, yeah. <laughs> and uh, <sighs> I imagine you learned quite a bit by, by, by starting out that way. Uh, what, what, were, what was the best thing you did for her, and what was the worst thing you did for her? And does she know? Oh, Lord. Um, <laughs> the best thing, I mean, I, um, 
the best thing I did for her. I think, you know, I, I did a lot of stuff for her. I wasn't just doing Facebook ads for her. That was something that I started dabbling in with her um, as she decided she wanted to start dabbling in that area. But I, that was back in the day when I first, after I first jumped ship from uh, my federal job and I was acting as a virtual assistant. So I was doing, um, in addition to my own life coaching, I was on the side, I was doing this virtual assistant work where I was like doing her blogs um, like getting them formatted. I was doing a little bit of web development for her. I was doing customer service for her. So the best things I did for her, I think, is just my, I have a, a really high attention to detail and really, really good customer service. Like clients, I, all my clients are like my best friends, and I treat everybody that way. And so I would say I did her a real service in um, just having that sort of deep connection with, with her, with her clients, and with um and having, you know, my applying my perfectionism to her work. Um, the worst thing I did for her? Gosh, I don't know. I mean, I <laughs> back when I, I mean, I would have to say, like, my first Facebook ads were not genius. I had no idea what I was doing back then. That was, like, you know, probably four years ago, five years ago. Well, that's not been a few years. You've risen quite a bit. Um, tell us a little bit about well, it. Four or five years in, in digital marketing world, is it's like dog years, right? It's like multiply that by seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's about 28 years. <laughs> 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 so, um, and then when did you realize that you could actually make a living doing what you were doing? That was probably doing doing this specifically. That was last year when I was working with an agency, a big. Um, well, actually, it was a very very small agency when I started. It was um, she, uh, the woman I was working with, had like you know about five to ten clients, and she. I was her first Facebook ads manager that she hired, and um, I was managing all those clients on my own. And then she continued to build that agency um, with me as her only ads manager, and we built it up to about near 40 clients um, before she started hiring more people. And it was at that point that I realized um, that there were things that I learned a lot. I learned so much from that, so many things to do, and I also learned a lot of things that I would do differently. And as I sort of got clearer about what I would do differently, I started to have lots of sort of my own mindset breakthroughs where I was like, I think I actually have something to contribute to this field because she was killing it, and I was her main person that was helping her kill it, <laughs> and then um, and I had ways that I knew I could improve upon that. Um, and yeah, and it's been great. It's been seven months since I started this my own agency, and it's been like mind blowing. Well, in in uh, you know, without telling a uh, secret sauce or any comments, you know, when you're five to ten clients, I mean, how did you get? clients advertising on google ads or facebook ads or just word of mouth or do you mean what whenever we were when i was with her or on my own no with her i mean that's yeah with her i mean she she ran facebook ads so she had her own sales funnel okay so she so you know you a sales funnel like you know you you've got the top of the funnel which is when you're targeting cold audiences that have never heard of you with some kind of free offering a webinar or a free guide or something and you know so she had something that was related to, to Facebook ads, targeting cold audiences, and then, um, you know, retargeting those people with, with ads for her services. And that was the primary way that she got. And then, of course, referrals. Yeah, but the first, you know, getting that first base is the toughest. Once you get the base, then the base can tell, the, tell, tell your message to exactly, the world. Yeah. But until yeah. you get that message out, or, you know, like when you open up shop, okay, I opened up shop, it's August 2nd, uh, good luck, you know. Nobody knows who you are. You're not going to rank in Google for quite a while. Uh, you know, you could advertise here and there, but th the beginning is tough. And no matter what company yeah. you're talking about, it's tough. So that, yeah. that, that, that that's a real world. So one of the things I have, so first of all, what is a Facebook manager? Ah, so that's, the, that's somebody who, well, it depends. Um, it, it's somebody who maybe you want them to interact with the client. Or, or not, that part might vary depending on the agency, but they're the ones that are going into the, the ads account and checking every day and making sure that the cost per lead is the lowest it can be, making any tweaks to the creative aspects or tweaks to the audiences that are being targeted and um, 
just making sure that, that things are running smoothly. They, they may or may not be handling strategy, and they may or may not be handling the, um, the client interfacing. But the, what they definitely are doing is going into that account every single day and, and checking on things and optimizing. Uh, well, first of all, um, when you say optimizing, I, we know what search engine optimization is, or some people do. But when you say Facebook optimization, uh, what's the difference? Yeah, so with optimizing and, and Facebook ads, it's the the primary goal is to get the lowest cost per per lead, maybe, or the per email address that you've gotten, or maybe it's the lowest cost per click on a particular onto a particular website. So optimizing is going in and and seeing how to get that. So you scale up maybe your your ads, you scale up the the money um, of the ads that are doing well and you turn off the ones that aren't doing well and that's sort of you know you just continue to do that every day and if you've got something that's like you know flopping then you turn that one off and you find something new to do when do you know that it's working or not when you've got the so it depends on the offering so i have like certain benchmarks or thresholds that i'm looking for depending on the offering um for like a free guide if somebody has like if you were to have like a free guide, you know, that you wanted to offer entrepreneurs on, you know, how to, what are the top 10 things you need to do when you're first starting out or something like that, and like a, a, a short ebook or something. Then, you know, I'd be looking for $3 a lead probably on that. So anything $3 a lead or less is what I would look for. On a webinar and a free webinar, I'm looking at something like, you know, 3 to 5 or $6 per, per lead on that. And then when you've got like a sales page to an offering, it you know, or you know, if you're a high ticket coach, then it could get a lot higher. Because the the revenue that you're going to receive from that is going to be higher. So exactly, yeah. So if you've got a four thousand dollar program, then you might expect to to pay a hundred to two hundred dollars per lead. And, well, and how do you define if a lead is qualified? Well, so you want to put them through lots of steps, and that's where the funnel comes in. So you've got like, you know, you've got the top of the funnel where you kind of, you're getting them in with a free offering. Maybe you're doing a lot of Facebook lives and retargeting the people who are watching your Facebook lives. You, you know that there's interest there at that point. And then they're moving down towards the middle of the funnel and they're sort of considering you. And, you know, there you might be talking a lot more about your offering, um, sort of the pain points that you're addressing, what happens on the other side. You know, you paint the picture of, like, what, you know, beautiful things can happen if they, if they um, purchase your offering. And, and then, you know, moving on down, those people that sort of, like, clicked on the sales page and didn't buy, they're still considering it. Those people are sort of the hot leads that get down to the bottom of the funnel. Um, in terms of qualifying them, and like for for income and stuff like that, you know, there's different little tips and tricks you can do in the back end of Facebook Ads Manager audience targeting. Um, I always say, you know, it's kind of creepy what Facebook knows. I agree with that, but I intend to use their power for good, <laughs> not evil. So yes, that's from your you women's studies target. class, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. Use the powers for good. So you know, I I love Facebook ads. I mean, obviously I work in this, but like I, I feel good about the work I do because when a Facebook ad is put in front of me while I'm scrolling through my news feed and it's something I really, really want, I'm grateful that they have such granular targeting because I'm like, oh my God, I need those yoga pants. I need those shoes. You know, it's, <laughs> I had no idea I needed that. This is great. <laughs> You're listening to KHCS 1220 and 98.1 FM. Um, we, we're going to be going to a break very shortly, but um, just quickly go over um, Instagram. Um, when did they start advertising, allowing marketing on on Instagram? If you oh know. gosh, I don't know the history of Instagram. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I know when that did you start? I got in. <laughs> when did I start? Yeah, when did I start? Um, I would imagine they started definitely in the last few years. They probably um, and I started working in Instagram ads last year when I worked for that agency that I told you about. Um, so uh, since Facebook owns Instagram, it's really, if you're running Facebook ads, it's really no skin off your back to run Instagram ads too because they're managed from Ads Manager, which is the same interface that you and platform that you manage Facebook ads from. You just have to do some tweaking to the creative to make it look right. And um, there's like a, a few little minor details that have to shift. And then there's also the Instagram stories. 
but now Facebook does stories as well. So they're kind of in some ways interchangeable. Um, but yeah, I've been doing that since about the same amount of time that I've been doing Facebook ads, um, at least professionally in the last year or two. So we have about one minute, and um, we're going to come back. We're going to go over, uh, basically, I want to go over how to set up a Facebook and Instagram account and how to get uh, start your marketing program for people. And then, uh, and then I also, before we go on this break in a few seconds, what is your website? Uh, ResonateWithSarah.com. And it's R-E-S-O-N-A-T-E? Uh huh. With Sarah dot com. With Sarah. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty basic right now. Um, and I've also got my my Facebook page, which is Resonate with Sarah. Okay. All right. We're going to be right back, and uh, we'll be back with Sarah, Liz, because I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Sarah Yamsich. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Comfort Keepers provides your loved one with loving in-home care. Miles McNamara, certified senior advisor and owner of Comfort Keepers in-home care. Our caregivers can help you in your own home, enhancing independence, creating safety and comfort. Our Comfort Keepers provide companionship, meal preparation, medication reminders, assistance with personal care, and even transportation to doctor's appointments. If someone you love can use a helping hand at home, visit ComfortKeepers.com. Or call 287-4200. At Advanced Audiology, we know how important hearing is to you, your loved ones, your work success, your safety, and your ability to stay in the game. Most people won't admit hearing loss to themselves or others. We make it easy for you. Today's digital hearing aids come in a variety of styles, including invisible. All feature-rich, providing unparalleled hearing quality, wearing comfort, and automation that simplifies your life. Don't be fooled by our imitators. There's only one Advanced Audiology with the purple sign next to AAA on Valencia Boulevard. Drugs or alcohol abuse can tear a family apart. In Santa Clarita, just like everywhere else, it's an epidemic. The Way Out Recovery is here to help. Call them now at 296-4444 or visit them on the web at thewayoutrecoveryscv.com. The Way Out offers outpatient treatment for adolescents, adults, and family members. The Way Out is compassionate, caring, professional, and confidential. You and your family don't have to suffer any longer. Call The Way Out Recovery now, 296-4444, or visit thewayoutrecoveryscv.com and make an appointment. Asking for help is the first step. City of Hope is a world leader in cancer research and treatment, and there's a City of Hope community practice location right here in Santa Clarita, eliminating a major barrier in the fight against cancer, distance to quality care. Santa Clarita benefits from City of Hope's compassionate care and renowned clinical expertise. Find out more at cityofhope.org slash Santa Clarita or call 661-799-1999. K-H-T-S. Now FM, 98.1 FM and AM 1220, your hometown station. And that's how you do it on Ask Brian. Welcome back. Well, we have a great guest, and her name is Sarah Yamtich. And on online, on Facebook, it's Sarah Liz. Okay, Sarah, you're back? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So uh, I've spoken to you offline, and uh, hopefully we can – we're going to give it a shot here, guys. I don't know if we're going to be able to handle it because we are on radio. <laughs> but we're going to try to establish – how somebody who's never had an ad on Facebook could actually go through the process and also to the extent that Sarah can give us some tips, uh, which is going to be difficult because it's all verbal, uh, and hopefully you guys can write it down, or at the end of the show, um, I'm going to try to convince Sarah to maybe write some comments on the KHTS page where she can explain some of these things. Are you up to that, Sarah? Yeah, sure. Okay. Absolutely. All right. So uh, I run uh, Santa Clarita Furniture Co., and I'm located in on Main Street in 
in uh, New Hall. Okay? And I want to have... And I got customers coming to my, my store. They're buying furniture. But sales are slow. It's summertime. It's 110 degrees. You know, a nice cold day here. And uh, we're trying to figure out how to get more people into the store and get maybe get people even to go to our webpage, potentially. So uh, you've been tasked with this assignment. Uh, it's like Mission Impossible. Uh, it'll self-destruct in 30 seconds. So um, <laughs> <laughs> That Fallout movie just came out, so I had to, had to use that catch. Uh, so now here I am, and I'm, I'm representing Furniture Co. of New Hall. Um, and I, we came up with this great ad. You, you created it. You had graphic people. The content's great. Everything's great. Now what? Yeah, so now you've got to drop that baby into Ads Manager. So assuming that you've got, your, you've got a business page already set up and that's already clear, then you would go um, you know, at Facebook.com and um, you're at your sort of like your home screen. On the very left, there's a column that there's lots of like options there. And if you go under Explore and click See More under Explore, you'll see one of the options is Ads Manager. Okay. And you'll click on that, and you go to Ads Manager, and it'll load up this, you know, if you've never been there before, it's kind of an intimidating screen. It's like where I live, so it's, it's home to me. But <laughs> it, can be, it can be intimidating when you first start looking at it for the first time. And you'll hit, click on the far left, you'll see something that says Create Campaign. So I would start there, but one thing you've got to do before you're able to publish any Facebook ads campaigns is you've got to get your billing set up in Ads Manager. So at the very top, there's this little toggle thing. Um, I think I've heard somebody call it a hamburger. Those three little <laughs> horizontal lines. And you click on that, and there's a drop-down box. And then there's this section called All Tools, and you click on that, and you'll see a place for billing. And you've got to go over there into the billing section and enter in your business credit card there before you're going to be allowed to publish any ads because Facebook wants to know that, you know, they can charge your account for the ad spend. So that's just, you know, getting that, getting that sort of out in the open. So then once you've done that, you can create your first campaign. So you, you go back to that sort of home ads manager screen and you click on this button that says create. It's a green button on my screen. Um, and then you'll see lots of different options here when you um, create a campaign. So it depends on what you want to do. If you just want to drive traffic to your website and you just want more people, you know, you want brand recognition, you want more people on your website, maybe you've got a blog and you want people to read your blog about the best couches, of 2018, <laughs> then... <laughs> I heard they're going to make that into a movie. <laughs> yeah, it's really exciting. <laughs> um, then you would create a traffic campaign for that. Um, what I'm normally doing is, uh, for my clients and for myself, is creating a conversion campaign, um, at least towards... Yeah, for the most part, that's what we're doing. Um, a conversion campaign is when you are trying to get drive somebody to a landing page where there's a place for people to enter their email address and they then become a lead. So you've got to entice them with something, right? So for a furniture store, it would be a 20% off coupon. So, you know, you would have a landing page. It's like get 20% off your first purchase at, you know, of, you know, something of a hundred dollars or more, $500 or more. How about and, how about the couch that even with insomnia you can sleep on? Per, oh my gosh! Yes, <laughs> exactly. You you know exactly what people need. So <laughs> this couch will put you to sleep no matter how difficult of a case you are. So yeah, so you know you've got your twenty percent off coupon. People enter their email address. They get to a thank you page that has a, a coupon, and they that's and they come into the store and, and do that, and you've got their email address, and now you can send them emails about any other promotional offers that you've got or store events or whatever. So you would click on conversion campaign for that. Um, you name your campaign, so you might want to name it like 20% off August 2018. I'm doing this as I tell you, tell you just so I can. Um, and so that's what the campaign's called. Um, and then you, you know, you check, this is where it gets complicated. 
but Peter, you can make sorry. It, but you can make uh, it easy. <laughs> <laughs> so then you you choose which kind of conversion you want. And in this case, it's a lead conversion because we're getting leads, right? We want those email addresses are leads for possible furniture sales. What, what are the other now options there, besides leads? Um, complete registration is one, and that's for, like, if you're doing a free webinar. Okay. Um, there's purchase. So if you put – so all of this requires that you put a Facebook pixel on your website. So your developer should know what that is if you've got your website and you can tell your developer put the Facebook pixel on there. So that's a whole other layer that you need to do. But you know, on your on your thank you page and on your purchase confirmation page, you have this pixel. And it's just a bit of code that Facebook Ads Manager gives you. It's got, you know, you can easily copy and paste it into onto your website and into the, the code head section. Um, and then that's how Facebook knows whether people have converted, whether they've given up their email address and or purchased your product. I, I got to imagine for somebody to see a Facebook ad and purchase a product uh, uh, that that's over five hundred dollars, that's like uh, hitting the lottery. I mean, that, that that's tough. Uh, yeah, so they've got to go through the whole funnel. Like they need to get their twenty percent off coupon, <laughs> right? <laughs> And they need to they need to come in and establish a relationship with you first. And um, you know another thing that people can do another kind of campaign you can go if you go back to to the create stage. So um, you can do create video views, and you can have um, a pre recorded video like a promo video like a commercial. And run that. That's actually really highly advisable for for most businesses, for pretty much any business, to have some sort of like little two or three minute promo commercial that you run. And then when you end up running any other ads, you're retargeting anybody who watched that commercial. So that means a they've shown interest because they watched it, and b they'll be familiar with you when they see you and when they see your offerings down the road. So that's like a video ad, you said. Yep. Yeah. So whenever you create a new campaign, you click video views instead of conversion or traffic. So you click video views, and then you load that ad up um, as as a video. So you put a little copy in there, you know, like just like you know, come by and see us or something like that on the in the copy, and then you've got your little promo video and um, make sure you get it captioned because you know ninety nine percent of people are scrolling Facebook while their spouse is watching television on high volume. And, you know, <laughs> so you, you want to have your videos captioned. <laughs> Multitasking. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And These then, are all the little tips of the trade. <laughs> <laughs> and so that would give you, that video would give you the amount of views to the site, and then you would thereafter retarget those people to try to get their email addresses later on? Or how would you do that? Yeah, yeah. So the, so. You've got your top of funnel, you're targeting cold audiences. The best way to target a cold audience really is a, is a video. And then you retarget anybody who watched at least 10 seconds of that video because three seconds is nothing. You know, three seconds is like their, their dog licked their foot or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> or and, they, um, they clicked the wrong button. <laughs> exactly. But 10 seconds is like, okay, they saw your face long enough that they would recognize you probably if they saw you again. So you can retarget and, and- any of those people. They would see you in, in, in a police lineup. They would know you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, the police would be able to draw your face. That's the Facebook so, targeting guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, anybody who's watched it 10 seconds, now you can read Facebook keeps track of that as long as it's uploaded to their platform. They keep track of anybody. And you can also retarget people who watch 25%, 50%, 75%, or 100%. Those people are in love with you and are ready to marry you. So you can retarget those people with... Um, your ads to your your coupon or to your promos or to your sales or to your, you know, if you've got like a big anniversary sale, you could like, you know, have that sort of ad running to anybody who watched your commercial. But if you start out with a video ad, then how do you capture the email address? So, so two things. One is your video. Those are two separate ads. Oh, okay. So you've got your video, unless, Unless you've got a video ad, and in the copy, you link to your landing page, and you say in your video, hey, click the link above and come to my website and sign up for our 20% off coupon. 
you could say that in the video. That'd be really cool. And then people will click on that link, you know, that you just pointed to in the video. You point up and say, click the link above. Somebody clicks that link. They go to a landing page that, you know, says, get your 20% off coupon. Um, you throw your email address in there, and um, there you go. That's how you can combine the two. But otherwise, if you're just running like a, a, a basic promotional video, like a commercial or something like that, and it doesn't have those kinds of instructions, then you're retargeting them with an ad, a separate ad that's a conversion campaign ad, not a video views ad. You're retargeting them with a separate ad, sending them to the landing page to get their coupon. So on the on the video, if you're just doing the video view, you're not going to know who it is. Is there a way to buy a list from, from uh, Facebook with those people? No. No, and that's probably a good thing, right? Because Facebook's already in deep water about a lot of, you know, the, the audience targeting that they can do. If they were to give over lists of names and email addresses, that, that, would, be, that would be really bad news for them. So, no, it's just you just have to trust that, that, that they've populated the audience and that your ads are getting in front of those people. Um, you can upload a CSV file, which is like an Excel file, you can upload a CSV file to Facebook and target those people with your ads, but Facebook's not going to give you a list of people that, that they've generated. But I, but I can run the video ad and then subsequent to that come out with something that captures the email address and is only sent to those people that watch the video. Yes. Okay. So exactly. that sounds like a good campaign. I mean, at least, you know. Yeah, that's a great, that's, that's like, that's your, that's, that's the strategy. Oh, I, now I, you've got it. Yeah, you can do this on your own now. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. I'll be calling you. Uh, KHTS twelve twenty and ninety eight point one FM. All right. We spend a little time on Facebook. If you want to get any more information or any more secret sauces, you have to call. Um, and that's Sarah Yamtich uh, on Facebook. It's Sarah Liz, and her website is Sarah um, Resonate with Sarah. Yep. Okay. That's right. So now we're going to switch gears because you're a multitasker, and now we just did all that with Facebook. I want to go over the same process for a little company called Instagram. Ah. Well, this should be pretty easy because here's the thing with Instagram. It's all run from the same place. So, you know, Instagram isn't like a thing that you do from your computer. It's from your phone. And so there's no platform, there's no, and Facebook owns Instagram, and there's no separate platform for running ads on Instagram. It's all run out of Ads Manager on Facebook. So it's the exact same process. Um, the place where it, it shifts is, you know, when you're, um, when you're creating the ad set. Um, so you click Create Campaign, you click Conversion Campaign, Traffic Campaign, Video Views Campaign, whichever, and then you're in the ad set level at that next stage you choose your placements. So earlier we were talking about Facebook, so you would choose the Facebook feed placement. For Instagram, you would uncheck that and you would check the Instagram feed placement. And then you move on to the next level, which is the ad level, and that's where you get you do the creative part where you put in your copy and your, your images. So that's the other place where things are slightly different than a Facebook ad is I don't know if you've noticed when people uh, on Instagram, you'll, you can tell when somebody who doesn't necessarily totally know what they're doing has posted something from a ad, Facebook ads manager to Instagram and they haven't like done the piece where they separate out the copy. And so everything looks super jumbled together. You can tell like it's all like what's supposed to be like four or five paragraphs is all smushed together into one paragraph and it makes your eyes hurt and you can't read it. Well, it's also compact. It, it is, it is. But it's <laughs> like, in my opinion, aesthetically, I like I like things to be sort of broken out, so you know you you can sort of scroll through and read it, and it's, it's, it doesn't hurt your brain. So, so you have to do a little bit of like tweaking to get that to get that look, unless you want it all jumbled together. In which case, like by all means, go for it. How do you split test? Ah. So, okay, you can do it a, a couple different ways. For one, Facebook will do that for you to a degree. So whenever you create an ad set, you can put lots of different ads in an ad set. So at the ad set level, you're determining the placement and the audience and the budget. And then at the ad level, you're doing the creative piece. Like, you know, you can have, like, um, 
I always start with at least three different versions of copy and three different versions of graphics. So I put those all at the ad level and Facebook will, will run with all three of them and then start putting more budget towards the ones that are getting the most clicks, that are getting the most sort of conversions. That's so, pretty incredible. So, they do it for yeah, you. So face, yeah, Facebook does it for you or you can do it manually yourself if you want. And that in that case, you would put a different ad in each ad set. And so then you would go in and like turn the ones that are converting up and turn the ones that aren't converting off. Um, so you can sort of split test things that way more manually, but I like Facebook to do it. They do, they seem to do a pretty good job. What's the minimum time you think you need, uh, to test something before, you know, to take it to the next level? Well, it depends. It depends. Like if it's a high ticket item, you need to, you know, you've got to let it run for a little while because people need time to consider things and you've got to sort of hit them from all directions, um, be a little bit sort of omnipresent in their, um, in their Facebook feed for a little while before you know whether it's going to work because, you know, people need time to spend that kind of money. But for something small, like a free offering, um, I usually give it like 48 to 72 hours, um, you know, letting Facebook do its magic and optimize the ads and, um, determine which ones are getting the most clicks and um, get it in front of the right people. I would like I like to like at least let it go two or three or four days before I make any judgment calls. Um, in terms of like you know scaling something up big time, you know, it might take a week or two to really get a good idea of how things are going to go. And so, you, you, uh, do you have a tracking software, or you just write it in a in an Excel spreadsheet? So Facebook has a reporting um, reporting system that you can use, the ads manager. There's like when you go to that little toggle at the top that somebody calls a hamburger, um, you can click on ads reporting and it'll come up with a lots of, there's a whole dashboard with a, a ton of different options for you. I use a software um, that I send my clients every Friday. For, um, uh, uh, it generates a PDF report. Um, and it's called Swedo, S-W-Y-D-O.com. Okay, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with Sarah Yemtich, and we're we'll listening to KHCS 1220 and 98.1 FM. Why do people from all over Santa Clarita come to our spa in Canyon Country? Simple. They want the highest quality services at prices that everyone can afford. This is Rosemary from Beyond Harmony Med Spa. Read our reviews and know why we won the Ultimate Beauty Awards two years in a row by the readers of Elite Magazine. Come and see how close we really are and experience the level of excellence that our clients have loved for the past 13 years. Go to beyondharmony.com or call 298-8008 today for a free consultation. Do you ever listen, but you're not really paying attention? Sort of like what you're doing to me right now. This is Alex Rabina, your advanced life coach specialist. One of the most frequent questions I hear is, what is a life coach? Well, tune in every Friday at noon to learn the value of having a coach and listen to a live coaching session on the radio. Right here on your hometown station, KHTS. At City of Hope, we don't believe the future can wait for the future. For over a century, we've been advancing science that saves lives. From four of the world's top cancer-fighting drugs to the development of synthetic human insulin, we are maximizing the potential of immunotherapy and making precision medicine a reality. It's not enough to promise future cures for cancer. We must find them sooner. We are the miracle of science with soul. Find out more at cityofhope.org. Santa Clarita Water has a long history of safe, reliable water service. SCV Water is dedicated to increasing efficiencies, protecting our vital resources, and improving their customers' experiences. That's you. Meet them at their new home on the web at yourscvwater.com. There you can find the latest news, rebates, and much more. That's yourscvwater.com. They can't wait to serve you. Something big is coming to Castaic. Is it a dinosaur, Bob? No, Blanche. Is it the 2020 Olympics? No. I know. We're finally hosting the World Cup. No, silly. They're building Castaic High. Bob, no way. 
way. Go visit castaichighproject.com. You'll get all the latest details. What's that web address again, Bob? castaichighproject.com. Again? castaichighproject.com. Bigger than a dinosaur? That's right. castaichighproject.com. Santa Clarita's hometown station. Hometown station. KHTS AM 1220 and the new 98.1 FM. It's Brian Time to pump you up. Welcome back. We're listening to 1220 AM and 98.1 FM. And we use that song because we want to pump you up. Because we want to pump you up with all the information we're going to provide you about how to make your business successful. And today, we have a very, very special guest that you've been listening to for almost 45, 50 minutes now. Her name is Sarah Yamtich, uh, on, known on Facebook as Sarah Liz, and she's been providing a wealth of information about how people can go from, hey, I have my own uh, dry cleaning store or furniture store, and I want to start Facebook advertising and Instagram advertising. Uh, Sarah, you there? I'm here, yeah. Okay. So before we went off air, uh, we were talking about how you send software reports or reports to people about information from their Facebook uh, marketing, and you said you use a software package, and I just wanted people to understand the name of that. So you want to go over that again? Yeah, so I, I generate reports for my clients at swido.com, S-W-Y-D-O.com, and it creates this, like, really pretty branded PDF document that I can send my clients, and it's, it's like, branded with their logo and their, their colors and helps them feel special when I give them all their numbers. It certainly looks nice, especially at the end of the day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so now, I don't have much experience with Instagram. We've been talking about that a little bit. Uh, those are just pictures, or is there something beyond pictures on Instagram? There are pictures and videos, um, and then they've got a little something called stories, which is can be pictures or videos. Um yeah, I mean, it started out as just like something for sort of amateur photo- and professional, I guess, but mostly amateur photographers to to show their their beautiful work, and it just took off. And so now it's a huge, it's become a huge marketing platform for people. And um, they just, you know, I think more recently, a lot more recently than Facebook rolled out sort of, you know, their own biz- business accounts and um, advertising as well. So, yeah, it's become a lot bigger. Well, it, it, it seems to me that if you've got a product, Instagram makes sense because you can show the product. A service, mm. I think, would be a little bit more difficult to me on an Instagram, but I don't know. I'm, this is just a guess, not having used Instagram much. picture base would be more product-oriented. That's that's my just a, a general opinion. Um, yeah, people, but people who sell, like, high-end coaching and courses and stuff like that, you know, personal branding is a big deal. So like people being the brand, a person being the brand. And so pictures of, you know, having a ton of headshots and like pictures of you with your family and like lifestyle pictures to show how great your, your life is and then sell that to people. (laughs) It actually is a good platform for that. Well, okay. Um, You know, I love challenges and hopefully this isn't too challenging to you. I run a law office. Okay. I'm thinking, mm. what kind of picture could I put on, the, on, on there for a law office? So let's say I don't do this law so that that'll be like I'm not – I don't practice criminal law. But let's say uh, I was doing criminal law, all right? Uh, what am I going to do, show a judge sentencing somebody to, you know, time off or something? I mean, h- how do you do that? Yeah, you know, that's a really interesting question. So you're trying to get people who I- want to – I mean, hire. like, who, who, how are you, who's hiring you? Okay, so person got a DUI, they're hiring me. I've okay. done that work, though, so that's a bad example. But if I didn't do DUIs, and, or I did DUI, so let's say I want to I get more DUI clients, you know. So, I mean, think of a billboard. Those are image-based. 
Yeah. Right? So, and I see like those kinds of billboards all the time. So, you know, think of, think of that kind of thing, showing, showing pictures of, 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 you know, people that sort of look like your everyday person and then having like a little coffee with maybe like a little bit of a story about that person and how you helped sort of turn their life from being upside down to, to, to being better. You know, if there's any way to, to show that like, you know, case studies and show people, I think that the more personal, the better. I think that was a very good answer. All right. We've got... <laughs> We've got about a minute left, uh, so we're gonna for the last time we're gonna tell people that if you have any questions, uh, where are you gonna go to Sarah Liz on Facebook? Well, that's my personal account, but if you want to come to my business account, um, sorry, my personal that. account Sarah Liz, that's fine. We can be friends, or go to Resonate with Sarah. Resonate with Sarah um, on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's my business page, and then also Resonate with Sarah dot com. So if somebody had a question after the show and they want to get back to you, that's where they would go. Resonate with, yeah. resonate with Sarah on Facebook. Yes, that would be the best place to message me, for sure. And I have no H on my name on the first name, in case anybody was wondering. Okay. And we're going to wrap it up now. Um, she's going to put some comments on later on, onto the Facebook page, I guess, or something about the show. But we've got to go. And great show. Thank you very much for being on. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. The best live theater can be found right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. The Canyon Theater Guild has been entertaining audiences for decades with top quality musicals and plays. Located on Main Street in Old Town New Hall, CTG also offers workshops for the young actor in your family. For more information, call the box.